I recently posted a YouTube short that started like this. India and Pakistan, two countries that have fought multiple wars. What do you think would happen if you went to Pakistan and asked people to say one nice thing about India? Well, you're about to find out because that's exactly what I did. Here are their surprising responses and reactions. And if you watched that short or the full length video, you saw what you might see as surprising responses. But if you go back to the introduction, you might have missed something. India and Pakistan, two countries that have fought multiple wars. This map in the comment section of my original video, could Pakistanis say one nice thing about India? That map generated a lot, a lot of controversy and anger. Many of those comments from Indian viewers say it's the wrong map. I should change the map or correct the map. And if you don't, we're reporting your channel. Now that caught me off guard because all of the comments about the map aren't really about the content, intent or meaning of the video itself. But they do get to the core of why I asked that question when I was in Pakistan. Could you say one nice thing about India? So today I want to talk about why this map of India and Pakistan is so controversial. Hi everybody, Fox Nomad here and today I want to help you travel smarter. But let me start off with the disclaimer. This video is not a full analysis of Pakistan-India relations or the Kashmir conflict. Although we will touch upon those topics, this isn't a deep dive into the geopolitical history of those two countries and this very complicated region. A complete deep dive isn't the purpose of this video and there are experts who are much better suited to go into the nuances of what's a complicated topic. In this video, I want to talk about why this map is so controversial and what it says about the original video where I posted it. Let's talk about where this map is from. This is a map from the Wikipedia page titled Indo-Pakistani Wars and Conflicts. You can see this clean cut border running down between Pakistan in green and India in orange. But this is a de facto map of the border between India and Pakistan. De facto, of course, meaning what exists in actuality despite official or legal status. So if you look at a Google map of the region, you see a lot of dotted lines. In other words, things are not so clear cut on the ground as this line would suggest. There are plenty of other examples of de facto states around the world. The Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus is one. Almost all of the governments of the world recognize only the Republic of Cyprus. You'll notice their flag shows the entire island. But in practice, Cyprus is split between a Greek South and a Turkish North, which is only recognized by Turkey. The political status of Taiwan is another de facto situation. And if you're already thinking, whoa, these de facto geopolitical situations are touchy subjects, then just wait till we get to the topic of Kashmir in the northern part of the Indian subcontinent. Kashmir is a region of 180,000 kilometers at the very north of the Indian subcontinent. It's mostly mountainous with the Himalayas and Karakoram ranges cutting right through here, along with three rivers, the Chenab, Indus and Jhelum. Kashmir is bordered by Afghanistan, China, India and Pakistan. Now in practice, when you hear people say Kashmir, that refers to the Kashmir Valley, but also the territories of Jammu and Kashmir, Ladakh, which are administered by India, and Azad Kashmir and Gilgit Baltistan, administered by Pakistan, and Aksai Chin and the Tran Karakoram Tract, administered by China. Of this total land area, India controls about 55%, covering about 70% of the population, Pakistan 35% of the land area and China about 20%. So we've got India, Pakistan and China all who've made claims to Kashmir controlling 55, 35 and 20% respectively. Got all that? It's a part of the world a lot of people stake claim to but you're probably wondering how did we get here and what does it have to do with this map? 1947 was a very very important year historically for this part of the world. Up until this point, for the previous 300 plus years, the British colonized and ruled large parts of the Indian subcontinent. There were many factors leading up to Britain's very hasty exit of the subcontinent in 1947, but revolts, violence, and a decline of power after World War II were all factors. But Britain's exit from the Indian subcontinent was a bizarre series of events that had and have massive consequences up until today. See, when Britain decided to leave the Indian subcontinent, they broke it into two independent dominions, Pakistan and India. The guy Britain selected to draw up these borders was Cyril Radcliffe. He was not a political or regional expert, 
but rather a lawyer. He had also never been to the Indian subcontinent, and in fact, the closest he came was Paris. Yes, Paris, that one in France. Continuing the bizarre series of events, Britain gave Radcliffe five weeks to draw up a border between India and Pakistan, again, a region he had never been to and clearly did not understand. Radcliffe cut right through the Punjab and Bengal states, and the effect of drawing these lines on a map was a refugee crisis of somewhere between 10 and 20 million people. The violence that ensued as Hindus, Muslims, and Sikhs migrated en masse to get to the right side of the border led to an estimated 200,000 to 2 million deaths. There are a lot more detailed resources, which I'll link to in the description below if you want to read more about this point in history. But for now, I'll take this back to our map. See, once the borders were drawn up, both in independent Pakistan and independent India, both laid claim to the state of Jammu and Kashmir, leading to three wars, the first being the Indo-Pakistani War of, well, 1947. Since those wars, there have been countless skirmishes and to this day, dotted lines on a map. Except this map, which led to the controversy in my original video. See, if you look at detailed maps of Kashmir, you see the dotted lines. And that's because India, Pakistan, and China all lay claims to the region, either partially or in its entirety. In practice, though, after all of the wars and over time military buildup, parts of Kashmir are under Indian, Pakistani, and Chinese control. Remember the 55, 35, and 20% numbers I mentioned earlier? The line of this map is controversial because the region is disputed. In some people's eyes, and I'm not saying every Pakistani or every Indian, but for a lot of people on both sides, in their eyes, all of Kashmir belongs to their country. So when you see this map, a lot of people in the orange part feel that some of these green areas to the north should all be orange, and a lot of people on the green side feel the opposite. That's basically as much of a nutshell explanation as one can give the Kashmir conflict. Essentially, to a lot of Pakistanis and a lot of Indians, Kashmir culturally and historically is a part of their nation. In practice, though, Kashmir is a region that is divided by three nations, millions of people, and a lot of bad blood over decades. Again, this is a very high-level explanation on why this particular map created so much controversy. But not with everyone. Some of the comments really get to the heart of the intent of my original question. Would Pakistanis be able to say one nice thing about India? Comments like this one with over 3,000 likes. The younger generations are naturally chilled towards each other, Let's hope for a complete peace between both nations. Or, being an Indian, this makes me feel at peace that however bad the matters would be on political or border side, common people from both sides will choose humanity first. And the thing is that people from both countries respect and love each other since we are all from the same place, same cultures, food, music. We relate on a lot of things. It's just the government differences and terrorism that causes issues. I made the first video to start at a very basic point of understanding. Could we, and I apply that to all of us around the world, could we say one nice thing about the other side? To my surprise, Pakistanis from all over the country, but in particular Lahore, a city that is right on the border between India and Pakistan in the heart of Punjab, where nearby the famous Wagha Atari border ceremony takes place at sunset every day, Pakistanis, even from this part of the country, were able to say one nice thing about the other side. I didn't know what direction the answers I got would take. I didn't edit out bad or negative responses. If you've only watched the YouTube short, I encourage you to watch the full video, which I'll link to down in the description. The positive comments gave me hope, and I think for a lot of you who are a lot closer to this situation, I think it gave a lot of you hope as well based on your reactions and the comments you left. Because for all of the comments I got complaining about the map, they ended up being a very small minority of the total overall comments on the video. And YouTube comments are no place to judge humanity. They are one of the most negative spaces on the internet. But the positive responses that I received really just kind of reinforced the main idea that we really are a lot more similar than we are different. And if you really boil it down, can you start at one? Can we start at one basic? point of understanding whichever side you're on i know a lot of people won't be happy with this video but i do hope after watching this video you now understand why this map and the border that's drawn on it is so controversial and a little bit about how we got to this point 
And thinking about all the fighting, violence, history, and tension about Kashmir between India and Pakistan, in retrospect, it's really kind of amazing that Pakistanis were able to so easily say one nice thing about India. And maybe that's a good sign for all of us that we can start to get things right, no matter where we happen to be. Thanks for watching. I'd love to hear your feedback in the comments section, especially if you're from India or Pakistan. I'd love to hear your take on this map and the controversy that it created. Let me know what you feel, what you think, what I got right, what I got wrong. All of that down in the comments section below. I'll be there and responding. Thanks again for watching this video. And while you're down there leaving comments, hit the like and subscribe buttons. I'll have new travel and tech videos for you every week. And I will see you in the next video.